comic book friends, I'm Travis. I'm still the disembodied voice. And this is... No Capes. That's right, where we talk about superheroes. No. Where we don't talk about superheroes. Well, we you talk know, just, about books that don't have superheroes Don't have the in superheroes them. in them, yes. And Ethan doesn't read them and or whatever. I can't remember the whole speech anymore. It's been long enough since I've done this stupid thing. At any rate, we're not catching Pokemon. We're talking comics. July 6th. That's when these all came out. Baltimore, Empty Graves, issue four of five. We're getting closer to the Red Queen so we can get to the, or the Red Witch, so we can get to the Red King. Okay. I always kind of feel like the Red Witch is above the Red King, but she's not. No. Anyway. It's all about men. I'm going to start singing, so I think you should probably move on with what you want to say about it. About fishes and bicycles? Oh. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No. Uh, so, uh, great by Ben Steinbeck cover, by the way. I like those guys in general. I so, like yes. Those. So, we get this kind of, we get uh, background, a little more background on the Red Witch. Uh, we find out about three quarters of the way through this, that who they thought the Red Witch was isn't the Red Witch. That was, like... So I'm like half daughter of the Red Witch. Right, this ghost. <coughs> kind of a deal. The ghost is really the. Um... No, the ghost no. they exercise the ghost. Right, that is was, the daughter. Is not. Right. Um, and these guys are all, the Turks are all enthralled with the, you know, to the actual Red Witch and whatnot. And Baltimore is being typical, typically belligerent, but even more so, it seemed like in this issue. I'm just going to stab it all. I mean, that's, yeah. kind of how, that, that's kind of his response to most things anyway. You know, you can be whatever you are, foul creature, but I'm still going to run you through. A um, little more, more so in this issue. Uh, I, I feel like the next issue, which is supposed to be the end of this one, isn't going to resolve anything because, of course, I, I just feel like the Red Witch is still a big enough thing. This is more empty graves. It's more kind of a background of the players again. It's kind of what we're getting, right? Yeah, you're probably right. And also just the idea that they all, yeah, who they are and why they're willing to essentially die for this cause. Right. Because that's really what, what we've been hearing over and over again. And that is the title of the thing, so it makes... The Empty Graves. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, yeah. you know why it's called Empty Graves, because right. they don't have the bodies to bury. Well, right. And, and, and that's kind of how Baltimore... Baltimore is continuing on with the, the, traditional, uh, the tradition of how a lot of the Magnolia universe... Um, Dark Horse books have were presented originally. They were presented in kind of these little mini series kind of things, but they all connect together. I mean, if you look at the inside cover of this, it'll say that this is issue number a thirty-seven or or whatever. Oh. You know, in a series is what it is on the inside. I don't think I ever look at. That. And they used to always. That's how they all were. Even the BPRD used to be that way up until issue one hundred. That's how it was too. It was a. Uh, it would be t titled BPRD, and then it would have an undertile sure. Hell on Earth, whatever you know. Slim picking county or whatever kind of thing. Um, like this one, it's Baltimore Empty Graves. If you look on the inside, it says number 34 in a series is what it'll say down below. So this is technically issue 34 if you're going to read it from the very, be you know, from right. the very beginning when they the first very Baltimore first books. Baltimore was introduced. Right. Which we have read all of them. No. We haven't? Oh, no. Oh, no. You're right. We're more like. There's, we're midway. Okay. Maybe quarter of the way is when we started. I there's there's at that. least two arcs, two arcs that I don't know of. Okay. I guess I just thought that when we started reading, that arc was the first arc. But no, because no. the, okay. the, those first stuff we actually got were just like the one-shot miniseries of him. Like that one that's two comics in one where half of it's him dealing with that tank that's that's laying there that the spirit has it, that spirit's hiding in the tank. And then the other one that the, um, the guy has come home to his, to his bride, but really he's undead. He's like a vampire or whatever, and he ends up putting him down. Right. Because he has a real fondness for vampires. Oh, yeah, well, it, so much. It, anyway, um, but um, yeah, I just, I continue to really like it. Um, my, 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 like I said, my only misgiving would be is, I mean, I think that, um, that Peter Berting? I would go with Berting. Peter Berting is a fine artist. I, I enjoy his work. Steinbeck, who used to do all of Baltimore, is just doing the covers. I really wish that he was doing the whole thing still. His. I mean, that said, I like their colors. kind of onion-shaped turbans, and the the, the the wise former scholars that yeah. are on the cover. Yeah, yeah. And I like the blue flame, and I continue to like what's her name, Sarah, the woman. 
the, the, the one the one lady that's in the yes. group. Yes, right. she is my favorite. I just think she's awesome. Yeah, she's pretty cool. All right. Despite it being a book all about men, being men. That's the song. Oh, okay. So, um, Sheriff of Babylon, issue number eight. This continues to just be such a good book. Amazing. You have book. to, like, sit down for, you know, set it aside for a little while before you go to the next book. At least I do. I just kind of have to sit there for a minute and go, yep. It's an amazing <laughs> nothing, book. Nothing super happy happens. It's an, it's it's an amazing part. book. It's, it's really a noir, you know, largely set in the setting of of Iraq in the early 21st century in 2003-ish whatever yeah. um, you know the, it, it the Americans and uh, you know other UN forces have basically rolled into Iraq have taken Iraq oh you know have beatbox Saddam and now they're trying to rebuild the place you know kind of stuff that's the era it's set in it has it really doesn't make it doesn't make a grand political statement. The book never does, which is excellent. I mean, there's politics in it clearly. I mean, I mean, it's set in in our world, and our world is full of politics. Whether yeah, you want to believe, whether whether you want to whether you want to believe it or not. I love this book because I love things like the ballsiness. The fact is, is there are four pages of 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 Sophie on the phone. It's literally just a phone conversation of her. It's it's. It's nine panel grids of her, of her talking on the phone, and I just don't. I can't remember the last comic that had four pages solid in a row of a phone conversation that, that they would take the time to have that long of a dialogue. And they're not showing the other person. Yes, Either. it's a phone conversation. It's just I her. Understand, you understand, right? Because we're we're might. standing here watching her having a phone right. conversation. We're not omniscient. You know, she's having this phone conversation. She's having a phone conversation with somebody they've kind of established as being. A, a, a terrorist, yes. in every sense, terrorist to the Iraqs, the Iraqis, as much as a terrorist. Well, at least certainly a terrorist to every character that's in this book. This person's a terrorist too. I mean, I, I, your your judgment on whether or not they're a terrorist outside, outside of that, if they're just somebody who has a different idea of what should happen for Iraq. But this wonderful conversation in here of her basically tricking the guy into showing up at a place. Um, um, Manipulating him to be someplace because there are other people who want him and she wants something from them And it's kind of a prig quote quote for everybody to get what they want out of it But you get this long conversation and then it ends with this page, which I absolutely love The far away well, it's this far away shot, but they're under the shadow of one of those sword arms So here's this menacing sword. Oh, yeah, this menacing shadow of the sword Looming down on them. It's also the place where they found the body for issue number one that started this whole thing out sure. Is, is there also, but I just love the visual of that is stunning that she's just Okay, this guy's ours that she's hanging up and the, and these three individuals are there And then, like I said that that this powerful arm that shadow looks like it could be crushing down on them That bad things are gonna happen who knows whatever uh, kind of thing the other thing that I absolutely loved about this issue um, is um, Of course one of our characters in here is a um, guy who used to work for Saddam Hussein's police force clearly has done some shady things in his past or whatever um, but and a couple issues ago his wife is killed they get his his wife's body back and and in, and in this they they haul the body off you know he washes the body you know um, and blesses it right all the central all stuff very intimate and beautiful right and and then they then they bury her they bury her in the swimming pool that was inside of Saddam Hussein's palace you know, in the floor of the swimming pool that's been, that's been busted up one up, which is all just great for that. But she is wrapped in a Superman sheet. Did you notice that? She I don't is. Think I did. I was she, noticing. She more. is wrapped. That the idiot talking about the rug. She is wrapped in a Superman bed sheet. Like if you were if you were buying sheets for your kid, it's a Superman bed sheet, and it's the traditional Superman. You know, the old the old Silver Age oh, Superman sure there. And for the whole, Americans are the ones that killed her. Yep. And I hope I don't get flagged for having shown a naked lady on my video. Don't flag me for that. Um, but, um, because it's clearly not sexual in any way. She's dead. And yep. just, and just be clean. Mean. But to me, that's a whole nother level of, of some sort of a statement, isn't it? The fact that she is being buried. In, in America's 
It's Your Superman. Hero. It's Superman sheet. Yeah, you have very good eye. That Why? Awesome. To me, that's just oh, that's so cool. I don't know who made that decision. If that was a, um, I would almost guess it's Tom that King that did that. But, but yeah, I just the book is brilliant. Uh, clearly, Sophie is a huge piece of this. She is. How much of it has to do with getting her family name back? How much has to do with just her seeking her own personal revenge? How much of it has to do with just the fact that she wants back what was hers at one point? I mean, because her family was a significant part oh, of the, yeah. you know, the, uh, the Saddam you know, branch of things. They had power and, and all this stuff and whatnot. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's pretty brilliant. Um, I would suggest to anybody the trade comes out if it's not out now it's out like this week I think this coming week that as we're filming this to pick it up I mean, unless you you know, clearly have misgivings with with um, you know the whole Iraq war and whatnot I think you know, clearly I understand from those kinds of a aspects if that um, <coughs> it, you know if that bothers you otherwise though if you're worried it's a war comic. Maybe I don't want to read a war comic. It's not a war comic. You know, it's not like it's Sergeant Rock or anything like that. You don't get the America out of it, and you don't get the, you know, the Americans with the rat bastards there. You're not getting a, a lefty or a righty, at least from from I don't feel like from a from a um, um, U.S. perspective anyway. Do you feel like it leans left or right? No, and I was going to say. Um, I do not necessarily want to read a war comic. All the stuff that happened in Iraq I find disturbing and depressing because I have well, feelings about it. This comic is... <laughs> is disturbing and depressing, but it's so good. It's such a good story and it's so written that I am okay reading this comic. So I'm just saying, if, yeah. like, like... You're that avoiding says, it because of those, because of those things. That's why I know that I am the same way. And I, when I first saw it, I was like, mm -hmm, okay. Yeah. And then it was really good. Really good. Okay, yes. So, yeah. no, I don't think that it lays on either side of the political yeah. line. So, we've got, this is where the book should have ended at, 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 at 8. Originally, this is what it was licensed oh, really? for. I mean, not in, a, not in the story this, this is supposed is... to stop. But 8 issues was what this thing was originally signed up for. Now, it's going to be 12 for a season. And then they, they fully plan on a second season. Yeah, if they take a break, they come back for a second season. Everybody's all signed on. Everybody's exclusive, you know, writer and artist and everything. So, yeah, I'm super stoked because I don't know what next season is going to be. But how this has gone so far has just been, there's just been these great, great character moments. And the whole burying thing is some wonderful character moments. It's amazing how many wonderful character moments we've had at that abandoned swimming pool. Oh, I know. It's just been crazy. I um, know. Because, I mean, he recently spent time with, with the wife. With the wife who's now dead. There. Right. You know, they, they got drunk together. Yeah. And it was just, it's seriously. Yeah, it's, it's very, very, very good. Super good. Very, and very good. Everybody comment. has so many sides. Yeah. Especially Sophia. She has a lot of sides. And it's just really interesting. Yeah. Nobody, well, well, I should say that back. Any of the main characters in the book do not feel one dimensional, two dimensional. They're all complex people. There have been people that have been introduced that are one dimensional. You know, some of the flunkies that are around are, sure. are one dimensional. Well, the version of a guy at the end. You know, right. Oh, love those rocks, you know. Right. But it, yeah, no. So good. Yeah. Anyway, fun. Other books. Another vertical book. Uh, this is The Unfollow, issue number nine. Super surprise ending. <laughs> At least I was surprised by the ending of this of this issue. So what are you, what are you thinking of Bob? You know, I remember that I, for the most part, don't care for other than art ones, reality TV type stuff. And even though that's uh -huh. the internet, that's what it is. And so I really did not want to like this book because I thought that's what it was going to be. Uh -huh. And then sure. it's like, oh, and they have to kill each other. Blah. No, it never they're says. Gonna, it never says is, they have to kill each other. That was what was implied to me. Okay. Like, uh, you're going to get more money if you die, therefore, you okay. know, it was like, the, it's, but it's not, everyone. It's actually really good. The art is really cool. and Yeah, yeah. Um, it, the art Dowling is, is really, an awesome really artist. So that, that has me on board just to look at the pretty pictures. Uh, like um, Dolly in winter, but yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty interesting. I like it. I don't know um, that I feel 
like all of the characters are, say, as developed as the characters in Sheriff of Babylon. Not that you can compare them. Just we just talked about developed characters. Like, sure. Okay. I I don't feel like the um, and maybe it's just because he is that kind of guru-y kind of leader. Akira. I yeah, I don't feel like he's. I I I but think. I think it's just that's that's his personality. Right. I think we're not getting more of him because I don't think there is more of him. I think he's trying to figure out who he is. Right. I mean, that's why he wanders. I mean, he's a spectacle to some degree. I mean, clearly, he's that kind of. I'm going to do the bizarre because that's what the artist does. That's sure. what the philosopher does. Like he's trying to pursue whatever it is he's supposed to be. Right. But he, but he, it's been mentioned that he's a fraud. That, re, that reality is he's acting like this, but, but really he's this scared little man like everybody else is. But sure. then he goes out and has his epiphany, supposedly. We'll which, see. Which could... But yes, the ending was a surprise, like I said. And um, as far as, I don't know, potentially crazy villain isn't the right word, but, you know, kind of is. The, the, the mask? The mask is fabulous. He's psycho. Oh, yeah. 100 bajillion. One of the things I think is interesting about the books is you have, you know, I don't think it's reality TV. I mean, I get what you're saying because it's kind of a survival game of sorts. I'm but it's not because, how... yes, but it's not broadcast. It's not broadcast that or anything. Only people choose to have themselves broadcast those that otherwise. Otherwise, the closest it gets is, um, you know, people are watching on the equivalent of Twitter, whatever it is in this thing, right. uh, to see how the number is dropping or raising or whatever's happening with it, um, you know, kind of a thing. Um, but um, what I think that are seen is, is the uh, mystical stuff that's c clearly here. It's not just one person being crazy. I mean, Danny, even before he was picked, technically picked for this whole thing, um, you know, they were robbing that jewelry store. He saw that panther crawling around. Right. He's and now he's got, but now he's got a jaguar yeah. chatting with him all the time, uh, who seems to be kind of a mother figure almost, in some sense. So there's all that. You know, there's clearly the deacon who, who is, we'd all, most, all most of us would consider him kind of a bug wop, um, doomsday prepper, religious nut, who's constantly talking to God. Um, you know, constantly in this conversation. Very inappropriately. Well, out loud, because you know, there's a hot. Persian woman that's hanging with him now, as far as he's concerned, that he's that he's clearly jonesing for. Yeah. Um, but 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 also incredibly standoffish at the, at, at, at the same thing. You know he you know has this weird respect and all that kind of stuff that goes along with it. But you know he's seen the dragon. He's seen this dude, this big, you know, looks to be African uh, guy who kills a person and this crashes a car into him, crushes them into the wall, right. and then walks off, kind of a thing. So I don't know if that guy is the guy that's working, if that guy is working with our dead, not dead benefactor uh -huh. or, or what's going on. And yeah, at the end of this, we have this big, you know, ooh, but did he die? Is he dead? Why does the mask put that freaking th sticky note third eye on his head to go in and see him? I just thought that was an element of the crazy. You sure? Or is it the element of the metaphysical? I mean, is it the element of the actual mystic? Because the other weird shit's going on. It leads me to not just simply go, oh, the master's just nuts. I guess, yeah, I understand. The, and the max and cracked is, and, and the what whole... Is making, what is making all of these people see these things? Not everybody is, though. I know, but we have... Courtney isn't. No, she's not. But Danny is. Danny is and Deacon is. is yeah. And the mask is, I don't know what. That's the only people... The, the, the yes, Persian woman but isn't. If metaphysically it's not just that he faked his death, then he is seeing something too. If he did die and now he's entered into some. Well, maybe he's in the realm of the dead and, and, and the mask has entered the element, puts this, his sticky note on, that's what allows him to see into the realm of the dead. Well, that would count as seeing things. Yeah, okay. So that would be three. But yeah, I don't know. But maybe that's because they're the real chosen ones. There's a lot of elements that don't... I know. Do you know that... I mean, I'm not... I like it. I like all that. That Having those extra elements, uh, they're either red herrings or they're... This could be more. Everything could be more than what it is. So it's not just simply 40, 140 people getting mowed down to you know a few to collect big paychecks. Exactly. Like I said, the premise, the first issue, feels like a... a like a bad TV show premise. And then it, to me, 
I said to me, but then it turns into something completely different and very interesting and intriguing. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel about it. Good stuff. Yeah. First trades out. Pick it up if you aren't picking the singles up. And then pick the singles up so my vertical books don't disappear. Next up, other oh, surprise horrible endings. So sad. Uh, Tokyo Ghost, issue number eight. Ugh. Yeah, you talk. <laughs> it's... it's so um, there's lots of death, death and dismemberment and and dismemberment blowjobs and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Hey. Blow blowjobs, yo. Hey, the it's ultimate fantasy. Range. If you're not flexible enough to give yourself a blowjob after you get your head cut off, you can give yourself a blowjob. Yeah. Except so there's sure plenty of there's it. plenty of vulgar sexual stuff in this, which as happens, ever as, as quite a few of these issues have had. Um, I'm enjoying the book. I love the art. Um, we get more background on Debbie and Teddy, you know, and the... Which is a very sweet story. It's not your fault. The acid rain comes and kills everything and, yeah. and stuff. It's a sweet story. And then we have a fight, big fight at the end of it, and, you know, the second biggest ultimate douchebag in the book is kind of reigning supreme right now. So, um, Danny yeah. is reigning supreme. Um... Curious to see what the next two issues are like, because there's only two more issues left, and the book's over. Yeah, we'll see. I, I don't know. Does the Tokyo Ghost really wreak the revenge? Is Teddy really dead? Once again, I don't know. Are they going to have a happy ending? At the is end of this there? book? No, hell no. Seriously? Is there's, there? There's not. There's they, no way. There's no I don't think Teddy's left. alive either. If, she, if she's got the magic hands to fix things, having, you know, having your throat cut from Has ear to ear... Had? I mean, she ran away. So. No, she felt like she went into the water because she was about dead. Right. Herself. But she still. That doesn't mean she can't pop up. Whoa! Okay. And lay healing hands on him. Sure, after he's bled out. Because it doesn't take long. Well, no, not when you cut both crowd arteries. You're kind of. Pardon me again? <coughs> a mess. Yes. Okay, I really don't have anything else to say about this book. It's, it's, it's sad. It's kind of a recurring theme, though, isn't it? Do I have uh, happy books? Oh no! I don't own happy books. Happy books well, are boring books. The next book made me laugh sometimes, and the book after that makes. Paper me laugh. Girl, issue number seven. Collect the whole set, tear the covers off, make a poster out of them, and don't show it to Travis because he'll cry. I'll cry. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I like this book. We still currently have three versions of what I can't ever remember her name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember. Aaron? Yes. That's it. Right. Aaron? Three Aaron's. We have oh. like futuristic Aaron. Adult Aaron. Adult Aaron. 27 year old Aaron. Right. 16 year old Aaron. And she's not 16. She's like 12. Oh, she can't be that young. Can't she really? Yeah, you're right. She's not she's 16, like but she's not 12. Really? Okay. Yeah. The Paper Girl Aaron, the 80s Aaron? She's 88 and she's 27 in 2016. If I'm you're not, 27 I'm not doing the math. In, in 2016, then that means you were born in 1989. So that doesn't make sense. Or 79? No. Because if you were born in 79, that makes you 37. And if okay, you were born maybe she's 37. 89, you're 27. Okay, whatever. You're right. Yeah. Anyway, adult Aaron, 12 year old Aaron, and 12 year old Aaron. Right, in future. And Aaron. alien, alien. Yeah, alien future-esque Aaron. Schrodinger's Aaron. Let's call it Schrodinger's Aaron, because that's my theory. When they did the old time jumpy, dimension loopy thing to fix her, because, you know, she was shot. Right. I when the, the adolescents fixed her, I think they created a second version of her, because they split. And, and she took an Uber car. And she's... Somewhere. At any rate. Um, but I, there is an interaction between 80s Aaron and adult Aaron that is just beautiful because 80s Aaron is like really you know we take pills for draw we take drugs she takes drugs because she's <laughs> suffering from anxiety yeah. and all this all, stuff right yeah, she's like she's living in her family home this? and yeah this? but then adult Aaron's like yes I know it's got to be so disappointing I'm not married I'm fat and right I still live in and I'm working blah 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 and Aaron's like are you you're not fat. That sounds like dad talking. And then he's. You got an like, awesome haircut. Right. I love that shirt. Right. Her hair looks great. Um, and she's saying all these nice things. And all of a sudden she bumps into something. 
and she's bumping into something because it's a dolly around hugging her. Turned around to hug her, and it's just like, uh, especially because she's like, and I love the fact that not when we're not married, it means we can go anywhere and do anything. Right, right. Yeah, I just, I, I like this book a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, there's the I mean, like, so there's the whole Schrodinger, the the crazy stuff that's going on, right. with all the elements, and then there's the kind of. Surprise, surprise for the redheaded friend. God. Well, yeah, because I'm, because I'm thinking, you know, as I'm reading this, of course, as an adult, I'm thinking, oh, well, what the hell would it be like if, you know, thirteen-year-old me ran into, you know, middle-aged me, I'm like, <laughs> dude, what the hell, you know, kind of thing. Um, but, and and, and so that's what I'm thinking. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna start, right, they're, they're gonna, run, they're gonna run into, they're gonna run into somebody else, you know. In this case, they're going to the redhead's house. And I'm thinking, oh God, what's redhead version of her gonna be like, you know? I'm, and I'm thinking all this kind of train wreck stuff, and it, I didn't even cross my mind that. She oh, dead, you died of, you know, this, oh, that, that girl, she died of leukemia years in ago. In 1992. So just the things that you had, you know, you, it's like whatever. It's 88. 88 yeah. is where they came from. So you have this many years left, and then you're done. I mean. Three you, years. You have that to look forward to. Four years. Yeah. So you're going to go home, get diagnosed. With, I mean, seriously, what do you do? Go home and go, Mom, I need to go to the doctor now. Um, because, I mean, is maybe there a chance to, I don't know, it's. Devastating. I don't know. Leukemia, I don't know what's leukemia happen. in 1988 was kind of a death sentence, wasn't it? I mean, um, it, it is now. Yes too. and no. Acute it, leukemia most of the time, but not always. When I was in high school, there was a kid who had it, and okay. he recovered. So it was really. It seems to be of of cancers that occur in kids. Leukemia seems to be a pretty common one. It seems. At any rate, ugh. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I'm just like I'm just like oh. You know, I didn't even think of that one. No, me neither. <laughs> okay, now, now looking at middle age me might not be so bad. At least you exist. <laughs> right. Cool comic though. Yeah, very. Yeah, it's got, it's got Cliff Chang, awesome Cliff Chang art. You know, delivers the emotional content that you need to uh, make for a good book. So, awesome stuff. The Fix, issue four. <laughs> this is the one that's funny. Mr. Pretzels. Oh, it's funny, but the end of it... I don't know. The end of last issue and the end of this issue. I mean, granted, what's shown at the end of this is just a visual. It may not really mean anything. The next issue could end up being goofy. But the end of last issue, yeah, you, you, you know, ominous. you you have this woman gets cut. I mean, cut down, not like brutally shot to hell, kind of thing. You kind of go through the whole comic thinking she's the this and the whole story. She's this, and then she's a little savvier than what she than what she's kind of acting. You find out that this is kind of an act. She's kind of actually got it going on she's pretty with it in the grand scheme of things with what she's doing with being a child actress and right, blah blah right. and then she gets gunned down dead yeah that part and that's how that ends you're like going jesus this went from ridiculous funny hilarious you know you know weird conversations about blowjobs and all other kinds of ridiculous fun things to you know this woman being brutally shot up this one it's all kinds of ridiculous stuff you find out about his history you know or he, you know he doesn't have he doesn't have real friends, you know, the, the, the love of his life is questionable, you know, I mean, use the pictures and, I mean, just, you know, all this different stuff and whatnot. Yeah, he, and then he, he bonds, he finally ball. bonds with Mr. Pretzels, who the dog absolutely hates him, but they bond over this whole chase down by the criminal. And then at the very end of this, you find out that, of course, he's supposed to be bonding with Pretzel so they can sneak something through LAX. And you find out that what they snuck through LAX is the beginning of what looks like a terrorist cell. A very serious terrorist yes. cell. That's like, I mean, because this whole time we've been kind of laughing. Oh, you know, they're gonna smuggle drugs through or something silly like that. Which not the drug, not that smuggling drugs is a good thing. We're not advocating here at the the Oddfellow House that we smuggle drugs or anything like yeah, that. But this is just but in the context, but in the context of a goofy story where you know they have you know, you know, laying around versions of you know being an asshole for dummies and stuff. You know, goofy stuff. To then suddenly have this thing at the very end that seems extremely serious. No, we're not simply you know smuggling through the the you know the best weed that Mexico can grow. No, it's an entire cell of terrorists armed to the freaking teeth. Yes, with maps. Maps. It looks like they're planning some yeah. massive horrible That's thing. Funny. Can I talk about the cover for a minute? Yeah. I appreciate the the dog is my co-pilot cover. Oh yeah, yeah. That amuses right? me. Well, I just love the fact. I just love the fact that also Pretzels is like, you know, he's he's in it, and of course the other guy's in a total panic. Right. And he's gonna freak out. Right? And also, I like the fact that they're they're in a plane, or landing a plane, but they have those 
car sheepskin right, <laughs> right, cover. Right, 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 right. Surprised there's not like a... And the drink holder and... Yes. Yeah. But I, I, yes, I did like that because the whole yeah. take on that phrase. Mm -hmm. Dog is my co-pilot and used to me. Yep. Of course, none of that happens in the Yeah, there's absolutely, that has nothing to do with the book. Still fun stuff. Yeah, Funny book. enjoyable. Fun book. Um, Revival, issue number 41, and The Glowing Uterus. Yes, I was about to say, I'm really glad that when I was about to give birth to either one of our children... You didn't grow like a nightlight? No, yes. There was not a lot of glowing going on. And, and I didn't have that pregnancy glow either. Yes. <laughs> I just felt like a whale. Oh. Um, but enough about that. You've all met Ethan. So it's anyway. cool thing. Yeah. Wow. As usual. More wow. Um... Well, be all Things wow. are still that going to the place in the, the basket, the hand basket. It's still because there's just been well, yeah, everything's riot, un everything's unraveling. Even the government had thought that they had this whole thing under control and they were going to do something sneaky and and fix everything. Supposedly that's blown up in their face. Face they've got rioting. They've got you know citizens and and military killing each other now. It's just all gone berserk. Exactly. And 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 as we joked at the beginning of it, um, M is extremely pregnant, and at the end of this, basically her entire belly is glowing. And I'm not not glowing in a ah she's pregnant sort of way, but literally night no, light. It is Ooh. a blue light. Basically, you know, it looks like her belly. So I don't know if that means she's light. getting ready to have, give birth, or who knows what's going to happen. Yeah. We I have like six more issues left, I think. Even though the end of this issue, the end of this issue has this ominous page saying. You know, down here, but this is definitely a holy crap issue because it gets brutal. Yeah, I mean, uh, people so are dying, the, and well, I can show the last page. Who cares? Spoilers around. But anyway, there's this page oh, yeah. that says that, that like says the final the final thing. issues of the Real Nowhere by Tim Seeley and Mike Norton. Everything, Everything dies. dies. Yes. And there, there's the glowy belly. Talk about you're not sure you're gonna have a happy ending. There's some characters I really like, and and their lives are, are being so completely and forever changed for not the better that I can't imagine. How can you go back to... I, yeah, how are people coming back from this? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I mean, if, like, even if tomorrow, if all of a sudden all the, you know, whatever was, whatever's making the uh, revivers, revivers were suddenly shut off and everything would to go back to technically normal, yeah. I don't know. Seriously. Love yeah. that cover, though. Yeah, the Jenny Friedman cover is almost always rocking. That one's yeah. especially good. Little, I, yeah, because I love the her ghosties in general. walking along there and stuff. And so. With her. And because she, of course, doesn't have her ghost thing because Anna right. killed it. So. Right. They, she drowned it. Yeah. So she's kind of stuck forever, potentially. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, great yeah, stuff. Still an awesome book. And I, I look forward to it every time I right. see it. Right, and yeah, issue forty-one. I like the fact that this is it was has has all along been written as a long-form story in this cycle of so many books that go an arc or the big two go twelve issues and suddenly get relaunched or restarted or whatever. That this fully had the intention of being a yes, long-form story. A long haul. For sure. They had no intentions at the beginning of this book of feeding you information, of giving you all the answers. It was more about about creating more questions than it ever was about giving you all the answers. And I really enjoyed that. That that you know it wasn't it wasn't simple. It wasn't spoon fed. It's been this long drawn out. And I still don't think we have the answers to everything. And I don't know that we ever will because no. that's kind of how life works. Exactly. So nobody really knows why. Oh, and how do we like the. Uh, Quaker mother daughter sword wielding duo. Well, I always liked them anyway. Me too. And, you know, and and I like the fact that once they immediately real well once the mom immediately realized that that they were getting played that they're getting screwed that they're like forget this I'm on I'm on team motherhood if nothing right, else exactly you know so so the fact that Em is and pregnant. Ouch! They, what she says about at least I take care of my kids. Oh yeah yeah. That was some pretty biting commentary. Yes. Somewhat for, accurate for Martha. Not yeah. Martha, that's Em. Um, that's Em. For, Dana? Yeah, for Dana. Yeah. So, good stuff. Yes. And we are back with Black Science issue number 22. Yep. I did not like this book in the beginning that much. And you loved it. And I'm just like reading along going, okay, yeah, it's got some good elements to it. But, you know, I didn't love the concept like you did. I didn't like the people. They seemed kind of despicable. 
They were. They still are. I know, but not as much. I mean, he's trying so hard. Well, he had an epiphany. He had an yes. epiphany. He realized this is what I've done. Now I'm going to fix everything. But has he really changed? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, th I think Pia. Has, his way is the I, I, th I think Pia has some good points in here. His his growing up daughter, who, you know, has been basically been abandoned a million times now. Um, you know, is basically look. You're doing this for you. You're still being the same narcissistic bastard you've always been. You're doing this whole rescue thing for you because you think you have to have all this back together again without thinking about anybody else. Yeah, maybe, the fact that they all maybe have I'm, lives I'm, now. I'm. Well, we don't know if they all have lives now. This she is does, the only person, right? Um, and he accidentally really screws well, it all up, so, which is funny. I mean, there's some funny elements and it in this. It wasn't a definite accident. He didn't do it. All oh yeah. Place. So they're getting ready to have this massive ceremony. They're they're bringing together these three warring tribes that've been warring for two thousand years. They're in the final moments of constructing this construct, and everybody's going to rejoice, and they're going to have you know epic utopia forever. And his rocket ship smashes into it and destroys the objects. And for whatever reason, these people all believe in these objects, and they have to have the objects to make this thing happen, as far as they're concerned. And those get annihilated. And he's kind of stumbling out of his thing because he only has marginal control over his rocket ship anyway. Now he's stumbling out of it, going, "Oops, well, I was, you know, he's not even realizing what's going on. He's being the absolute scientist, and kind of looks up and goes, uh, oops, you know, did I wreck something?" Yeah, but then it gets worse because they they're trying to negotiate. Well, they That's go to the accident they, I was. Oh, about. right. They so they go to this dinner, and at this dinner, they're they're you know they put him in a cell basically, because of course everybody's upset and they're on the verge of war again because of this whole this wrecking of this stuff, and um, they get him out of prison and he is going to talk and tell them what's happened. What? That it was all an accident and it's going to fix everything. Well, he's thirsty. He picks up a drink. He starts drinking and he accidentally picks up the wrong person's drink. And it's a drink that is not meant for human consumption. Yes. And it basically liquors him up crazy pants right away. Yeah, he is so drunk. And, he, and it's, it's so inappropriate. Because the last thing that he says that makes any sense is, when because when she points out, you know, um, I think you're cute and stuff, but this this is not the drink for you. And, right. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just so nervous. And right. then... And then he boom, he loses is completely. It. He's off the wall. Auto. Spills the drink more, pours it down. The other, the person he's been talking to is one of the oppositions. She's a extremely buxom person. When I say extremely buxom, like he's trying to clean tree it up. trunk size, and he's he trying to hand, like, mop up. up to well, it's past his elbow. In her cleavage. In her cleavage, trying to mop her up. Yeah, it was. He's like, I'm so sorry. There's just so much. Boob. Right. It just, yeah, it just does not get any better. So there's these funny there. moments. It's funny. It's hilarious. Yes. But there's also these moments of, of the daughter be... basically going, you are just an effing narcissistic freak, and you are wrecking my life here. Essentially, Leave yes. me alone. Go away. This is all continues to be about you. And he's like, no, you can't give up on family. This is about family. And and she continues to go, you are a crazy right. narcissistic bastard. I want bastard. these people leaving my family now. They've been my family. Right. So, yeah, it's... I don't know where he's going, what they're going with it next, but yeah. I have enjoyed, since he went crazy and started climbing his mountain, I have enjoyed this way more than I did in the beginning. I'm not saying that I didn't think it was good. Sure. I'm sure. saying that, that I've liked it. Right, right, right. But we needed all of that. We needed all of that so to get to this. You can't put something together if you don't break it. Yeah. And then to find out that you're still potentially a douche that's trying to fix things because it'll make you feel better. Right. And it's not about how everybody else feels. Right. Right. I mean, all of these books that are coming out by Remender right now are all basically uh, versions of his going to a counselor and talking things out himself, the actual writer. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, to some degree, it's, you know, the one about hope from, from Lowe is, yeah. is all this, you know, and it's all, it's all kind of that sort of, a, I, I think, in some sense, he's using some of that. And, and to some degree, you can kind of go, oh, he's really, you know, hitting nail on the head on some of these things. But I, but I still think he's doing it successfully. His counseling, his changing his counseling into into words, I think is successful. It's making entertaining stuff. The art in this is is bonkers cool. Oh, always yeah. has been. That's what I thought was great about the book. The beginning was just this crazy adventure of of a writer writing a story and going, "Hey, artist, just make up whatever kind of crazy world you want to make." You can go anywhere and, you want. and him just going nuts with it. It's just been fun. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Twenty two issues in, I'm still enjoying that kind of. More bright and cheery books because yeah. clearly Sunshine and Roses, it's Stray Bullets, issue number 64. Yep, everything good happens in this. It's amazing. How many people in that picture are still alive? What do you mean? Um, in this right series, now, they are all still alive. At the end of the book, how many are still alive? Three of them. 
No. Mm -mm. Really? You don't think that he's S Spoilers. Dead? I don't know how you want to say. Because there's lots of people who have a, are just getting around to reading the, oh, okay. the Omnibus. Fine. Did yeah, you? And I have not read the Omnibus. Well, so. then you don't know. Yeah, I know. Do you really want me to tell you? I said at the end of this particular issue, so he's still Oh, alive. this issue? Yes. There's... I mean, I know that was No, you said that's why I asked. What time? Because this yeah. book... Because the thing about the thing about Stray Bullets is, is it's not written linear. Yeah, it's not sequential. Bits and pieces of it are are in periods of time, and the periods are... And, and then we're, they're told stories in completely different periods of time. So you, you may get... Stuff that's set in ninety one, you may get stuff that's set in eighty seven, you may get stuff that's set in seventy six when Star Wars is out. It, you you get sure. it hops around. No. I was mostly saying that this is another one where bad things are happening to, well, not really hey, good people. But everybody's got them. cocaine under their tongue, so everything's fine. Sure, yeah, they're all super happy. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, you know, the book is horribly depressing. You really think about it. The situation these people are in is is brutal and, and unkind to say to say the least. This issue has some amazing, horrible stuff happen in it. In the fact that you, they, these people show up at this hotel, you know, one person's got a bald hand, one person's got a broken foot, one person's shot in the shoulder, one person's a massive coke queen, and um, they've got a kid in the trunk of the car. They go to this kind of rundown hotel. There's a guy around the hotel who clearly has his own history, and we kind of we kind of find out his history is through phone calls and stuff. Yes. That he's somebody who was abused himself, physically abused, sexually abused. Uh, but at the same time, he also him. well, but he also called and called Wolf a few times too about other stuff that he says in the phone conversations. Yes, I was lying about this. I'm not lying about that. You know, I was lying about you know lying about that, not not about this kind of stuff. So, so and he finds out there's a kid in the car. You know, he's like, oh my God, I'm not going to let what happened to me happen to you kind of stuff. The guy ends up getting shot. And they know this local doctor that works at his house they can take him to. And the local doctor is the freaking person that abused him as a kid. Yep. So like I said, horrible, horrible stuff. I mean, it's, it's awful. And but yeah, so it's, wonderfully written. And the whole funny, the whole, unfortunately. Well, yes, that's just it. You're, it's, you're it's like... It's comedy of air, it's funny. Yeah, you know. it's 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 um because they don't know. It's it's um. Very oh, what's that? The, what's that? It, thing. Tarantino. There's a couple Tarantino movies that's like. Oh. It's like Reservoir Dogs in ways, and it's like, what's the real popular one? God damn it. Uh, Pulp Fiction. Yes. Yes. In the in the sense yes. that you know. True. Well, like in the like in Pulp Fiction, and the when they're in the car, at least I think it's funny. Maybe I'm just horrible. Oh no, it's. When funny. they're in the car, and they're talking about the Big Macs and the and the French version of the Big Mac and all that stuff and whatnot, and they end up accidentally blowing the guy's head off as well, in the back of the car. Well, that's not what they're talking about that, but they're just talking about stuff in general, and he's gesturing with the gun. And accidentally and blows the guy away. Yeah. And, and and it's horrible. The guy's dead. I mean, his his brains are scattered all over the place. But at the same time, it's funny. That's how this book yep, in, in places lands. And that's what a lot of it is. You laugh your ass off at some of the stuff because it's just so horrible and freaking ridiculous. And ridiculous, exactly. Um, David Lapman definitely knows what he's doing. Brilliant. There's a reason that back when the original book was put out that he won all, uh, basically every comic book award there was at the time. I still think he's incredibly smart. I think it's an incredibly smart book. Love the way that it's written and, and whatnot. Um, yeah. Just great, great, great stuff. Well, I, I should have ordered these books better. <laughs> anyway, because these last two books are like, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, the Discipline Issue 5. Yep. Go back and look at our last video where you talked about Discipline Issue Number 4. Right? Yeah, that's really all you need to do. Right? Pretty much. We're not big fans. Love the art. I, I love the art. Uh, the story still makes very little sense. This issue touches on some Cleopatra, um, Etu Brute stuff, and so what? Yep. Just kind of disappointed. Peter Murphy really want better stuff from him because he's had very good stuff us. Anyway, um, Mondak. 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 Monotic? Okay. Roche yeah, Limit Monotic. Yeah, frankly, let's just say... The final issue. The this really is image. This really is the last issue. This is issue number four of this. And it is the last issue of the trilogy of, of books. And you should talk because I feel as though I really need to go read all, all of, of it together from the beginning to the end to really get the feel for what he's doing. Right. 
Um, so this is like heavy sci-fi mixed with philosophy is what it is. And then I guess really there's lots of heavy sci-fi that philosophy is a, a chunk of it. It's not simply just a matter of, of a laser gun or whatever. There's this whole thought of the future and, and what it might be like and whatnot. And, and so there's, there's some of that in here and metaphysics and whatnot. Um, this issue in particular, let's see, um, it, it ties up kind of three, actually two storylines basically um, in, in, in this whole thing as there's this entity that's sitting on the edge of a, of a uh, on the other side of a black hole and it's coming through and it basically wants to replace humanity. It wants to be humanity. It, it can't figure out how to do it uh, because it, it, it basically has an allergic reaction to the human soul, the human condition. And so it wants to get rid of the human condition and possess the bodies and then slowly understand humanity and become humanity itself. Um, is, is, really what it, is really what was happening this whole time. And um, our heroes in kind of two different ways uh, attack the entity right, from and two different sides. And um, we think win at the end because yep. both sides basically go out in a blaze of glory. The end is very pretty. You know, it, it goes out as a yes and no. Um, what I'll say about the entire story and whatnot is I thought the, um, the first um, arc, the first trade, uh, of this, uh, which was called just Roche Limit. They may have titled it with something else after the yeah, fact. I, um, I thought it was brilliant. The art in it was yes, amazing. It was really good. All the covers were all, all these amazing pieces of like modern art of sorts and stuff that I just thought were really brilliantly done and, and everything. And it had this, the, every issue had this kind of philosophical edge at the beginning of it that kind of gave you a belief of somebody's beliefs that was in the book. And then we kind of went on with this kind of space noir detective story slash Blade Runner slash um, um, uh, outsider kind of a you know, kind of a thing and it was really cool and then we changed artists we went to I, I believe it's the same artist that did this that did these books did the middle one and the middle one for me was hard to read because the art is so heavy and 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 muddy and splashes of really dark colors on it and whatnot that to me was not very appealing and we get this whole story set farther in the future, 75 years in the future, where they're on this planet and there's some alien force doing something or whatever. And, and I know there are key moments in there that I probably should go back and reread that because I did miss those key moments because it was just kind of a struggle to read it, to be quite honest. Yeah. And I got this because I knew it was going to be short and I knew it was going to be the end. And I really kind of want to see how those two different stories were going to tie together right. in this. And so that's why I got this, even though I know lots of other people were like going, oh man, I can't believe after the last one you're getting this too. But... Right. Wrote, wrote it out. Um, there were some elements in this arc that I, I really liked. I liked the lady who had been on that planet, who thought she was on this coastline at this lighthouse with all this other stuff going on. Right. That was all just kind of in her head. The alien force kind of messing with her to try and you know keep her away. Um, and, and at any rate, so there are these two forces at play. The the aliens had were using some humans as as kind of like agents of change for them. We get this big battle at the end of it and then they bombard the, the alien stuff and win the day at the end of it. But yes. I agree with you though that the, the first arc seemed to be the most cohesive, easy to follow story uh -huh. of the three. Right, right. And I, I cared, the, the middle story is the one I cared the least about. Uh, yeah, it, basically it was a survivor kind of thing. These people crash land on a planet, and the planet won't let them go. And they kind of, and, and they kind of, and they killer. discover what's going on on the planet, why it wouldn't let them go. And the killer robot that's not really a killer, right? Robot humanoid friend, right? That supposedly killed his, yeah, yeah. And that person shows that. And then, and then this, up again. and then this four issues try to tie all that together yes. and to make some sense of it at the end of it to to then deal with the ultimate threat. Somewhere that thing, or at least the first part of it, is in some sort of development for television or movie. Huh. Maybe it'll make more sense in that way. I don't know. I would think you'd almost have to tell it serialized, though, I can't imagine. Unless they're going to tell it in three movies, and then I would think it'd be awfully hard to watch the first movie, just like we did with this comic, then read the second comic and go, what the hell does this have to do with the first one? And then the third movie tying it all together. Right. I don't know. Anyway. That's it? Yeah, we're done. So, until next time? Yep, we'll see ya. Bye.